Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone it is for wherever you are in the world. Um, thanks for, so much for coming to this open house about our Climate Change Learning for Action course. Um, one request, if you could please turn on your camera if you are able and comfortable. It makes it friendlier and uh, makes us realize we're actually talking to real people here together and we can see who's asking questions. Really appreciate that, thanks. As you all know, being online can feel very impersonal, and we do so much of our course online that we really try to make it more of a community feel whenever we possibly can. So my name is Greg Finley. I'm course director for Terra.do's 12-week flagship uh, course called Climate Change Learning for Action. And of course, we're all here to talk about that course today. So uh, about this session, first, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the course and about Terra.do. I'm also gonna tell you a little bit about myself and my journey because it may be similar to some of your journeys. We'll hear from our community manager, Kirti Mannion, about mentorship and community. Yep, Kirti's there. Uh, and then we'll hear from three graduates of the course, Arti Sharma, Moritz Kramer, and Ali Martinez. Um, thank you all for being with us today. We appreciate it. We love to see our alums back here. Um, wonderful to have you. And then we'll have plenty of time to answer your questions uh, in the second half of the open house. To ask questions, if you could use the raise hand function here on Zoom and, and or um, you can type your question into the chat, either will work. So a little bit about Terra.do. Terra.do started in 2020 and we have an ambitious goal of getting 100 million people working on climate change this decade. It's a super ambitious goal because it's a massive problem. And to meet the scale of the problem, we need to have ambitious plans and goals to get there. So uh, to achieve this goal, we offer a combination of climate education, connections to employers and climate jobs, and a supportive community of people who wanna make a difference on climate change. And uh, as most of you probably know, you can check out our programs at terra.do on the web. Also last year, we launched an app and you can find the app, which is available on the Apple App Store and on Google Play. You can find that. Uh, and with the app, the company went from expanding, uh, expanded from learning only to a new focus on community networking and jobs. And on the app, you can find job listings, job fairs, career support, and many other things. Um, we also are really doubling down on this flagship course because it has been such an influential part of our company and made such a difference on our fellows. And so this is a big focus for Terra.do in this coming year. The Learning for Action course is an intensive exploration of climate science, climate impacts, and climate solutions. And it's a combination of written classes, live weekly lab sessions, live deep dives, and live expert guest talks and workshops. We do record all of the live sessions, so if you can't attend, you can always watch a video of it. But we do urge people to come live if you can. Before I go deeper into the course, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and uh, my story and my journey. This is uh, most recently, I was CEO of a sustainable tourism company focused on uh, travel to Latin America. And, and included in that, I did community-based tourism projects working with indigenous tribes in the Amazon basin. But through my work traveling in the Amazon and the Galapagos Islands and various places, I started to see that climate change wasn't just in the future, it's actually here now. And local people were showing me how climate change was impacting their lives today. I also have two kids and uh, I started to become pretty concerned about their future. And I realized that I really wanted to focus my time and effort on climate change. I started volunteering. I worked, uh, I joined the boards of multiple organizations. I did work for them on uh, energy and utility work on clean energy issues. But eventually I decided that I really wanted to work full time on climate change and I wanted to align my work with my values and um, I sold my business and I decided to take a job or to move to working in climate change. It was at that point that I stumbled into the Terra.do learning for action course and uh, it was pretty good timing. I was a little bit cocky at the time. I thought I knew about a lot about climate change because I'd been volunteering and working on it for about 10 years or so. 
But I thought, you know, this might round out my skill set and my knowledge and it might help me out. And I took the course and I found that it was fantastic and I really loved it. And I originally came to learn and I learned a great, great deal. But I've stayed at Terra.do because of the amazing community of people like yourselves who join this program and who come here with varied backgrounds and skills and, and so much to offer. And uh, so that's how I ended up here. Uh, when I started, I was somewhat depressed about climate change. And now through this course and this program, I actually find I'm invigorated. And I often tell people that coming to sessions like this is my climate therapy, where I get to talk to amazing people about solving this great problem. Um, I started as a fellow. I became an instructor for Terra.do, and now I'm course director here. So a little bit more about the course. Currently, we have two cohorts running. Cohorts are what we call a group of people who start the course together. And in these two cohorts, we have nearly 300 fellows from more than 25 countries coming from a broad range of professional backgrounds. Um, we have people who are scientists. We have business people. We have project managers. Turns out in our most recent cohort, project manager was the top job that people came from, which I thought was a little bit interesting. Many people are looking to transition to uh, working on climate. Some want to start a climate company. Some just want to learn more about climate so they can take action in their personal lives. But people come for all sorts of reasons. A uh, large number do want to get a job on climate. And uh, the Learning for Action course is um, an intensive exploration of climate science, climate impacts. Oh, I told you this part already, but the, the course itself, uh, it's a 12 week program. This upcoming cohort launches on January 30th, but that very first week is really just an intro to the course, to our Slack communications and to the course materials. And our first sessions begin on February 6th. The course is interactive. Uh, we have asynchronous course material. So we, we will release a class or two every week that you go through on your own time. But then we have live weekly lab sessions led by an instructor with around 25 fellows in there. We also have uh, those take place on Tuesdays. Although one of them, if you're in India, it might be early Wednesday morning in India. We also have guest speakers and workshops that generally take place on Wednesdays. We do deep dives starting in week three, where we go deeper into a topic that we've been learning about for those who want to. Those are optional. Those are on Thursdays. We have five assignments. All of them are intended to help you on your climate journey. Three of the assignments are individual to our team. You get lifetime access to the course materials and the videos. Uh, which is fantastic. I know for myself, I have found I'll get into a conversation about something and I'll go, I'll think, I remember that, but I need to look it up. I know where to go look it up. I go back to a class that I studied previously. I look up the details and I'm able to share knowledge and links and other things with people I'm talking with. Some of the biggest outcomes of our program people find is our, our confidence and connections. Confidence that you know what you're talking about, you understand the climate space, you understand most aspects of it, and then connections with the fellows and mentors and the instructors and the staff at Terra.do, which can help with jobs, it can help you with projects, it can help when you're starting a, um, up a company, whatever it is that you're working on. Also important, I mentioned Slack. We use Slack for internal communications. We set up channels for the cohort. Our upcoming cohort is called the Zebras. We tend to name our cohorts after endangered species. We started with the Monarchs. I'm not quite sure why we started with M, um, but we've gone alphabetically since then and we are already up to the Zebras. And um, that's kind of it from my side. I'm going to pass to Kirti to fill in details what I missed, tell us maybe about the mentorship, um, the community team, and anything that I may have missed. Thanks, Kirti. Thanks so much, Craig. Hi, folks. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Again, uh, I'm just going to maybe pop my video off for a little bit and then come back again. Apologies on that, but you, I'm hoping you can still hear my voice. Uh, still audible, right? Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Apologies on that. Um, unexpected. Uh, even sitting in Singapore, internet connections can be shitty. Apologies <laughs> on that. So yeah, um, no climate background, but it has been a fantastic and amazing journey for me with the company. 
You know, I think when you say I'm doing something bigger than myself and this job has been exactly it. Um, I want to thank all of you for kind of making time to come along to this open house. I think community forms the secret sauce of our learning progression program. People are invested to solve this problem. They're not afraid to get their hands dirty. Um, and there's enough scope for networking, one-to-one -one interactions. And I think all this kind of enables community to kind of, you know, bring everyone together as well very strongly. Now, mentorship also forms a key part of how the course functions. There's two parts to this. One is interaction with alumni, and then there's a formal interaction with climate experts as well. Uh, and this is access to folks, the experience, and I just kind of learn from it and move ahead in your own climate journeys as well. That very briefly is just how community and mentorship functions with the Learning for Action course. And if about, you know, uh, me and, and what's kind of happening with community, I'll let our alumni talk about their experiences. I think that's where you get learn more about how the course functions and what you get out of it as well. Um, Ati, do you want to maybe get started, please? Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Arati. I'm from uh, Delhi, India. Um, I am still part of an ongoing uh, LFA cohort. And I started in October, but we had a couple of breaks in between for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So our um, course finishes first week of Feb. Um, I used to be a flight attendant for about 15 years. And um, thanks to COVID, that came to an end. And, uh, but also thanks to COVID, I was, uh, you know, I, I did a rethink on my career and I was looking for something with more purpose. Uh, a friend of mine and uh, I, we started thinking about uh, starting a sustainable business uh, based out of India. But uh, while researching for that, I uh, chanced upon uh, Terra.do. And uh, that completely, I mean, uh, you know, opened up my eyes to uh, how big the problem is. And I'm, I'm, I was considering at one point of time a master's in environmental sciences, but did not, could not spare the um, money or the time. And I opted for this course, uh, Learning for Action. I'm really glad about that because uh, I think it's a very uh, well-crafted course, uh, not only in terms of, uh, you know, the width of knowledge that you get out of it, but also with regular assignments, uh, it brings a lot of focus and uh, you know sets you in the right direction of what you want to do. For example, I was also uh, you know thinking about starting a business, and I thought I had some ideas. But uh, with uh, the course, I got to know that how I was looking at things only from one point of view, and there are a lot of things that you need to consider. So that was personally very helpful. And uh, the community is like just such a warm community and very well-managed community. Um, you feel instantly supported. First of all, uh, you know, in a world where there still are some climate deniers, your friends, your family, uh, you, you think that everybody is on the same page from the very first day. And uh, then you get to hear about, uh, you know, uh, different contexts, people from all over the world talking about their experiences, how they think about a certain problem. Um, it's all very helpful. It, it gives you a very uh, comprehensive experience and uh, knowledge about this big problem. And that's needed because otherwise we can get very um, sequestered in our part of the world. So it helps to have, uh, you know, group mates from all over the world. And um, um, as far as what I'm uh, supposed to do now, I've, I've found uh, certain areas where I need to work and uh, I'm yet to start working again, but uh, um, I have been put in touch with some people and I think uh, that's going to be helpful. Um, Moritz, do you wanna take off? Yes, happy to. Thanks, Arti. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, just briefly on me. So my name is Moritz Kraut Kramer. Uh, I'm from Germany originally, as my name and accent may give away. Uh, but I've been based out of Toronto, Canada uh, for the past uh, a little over 20 years now. I'm also part of a, the Zeres cohort, so same as Arti, um, uh, starting in October and finishing uh, the course in, in early February. 
So a little bit about my background and what brought me to Terra. So I have a business undergrad with a um, focus on finance. And after graduating, I worked in investment banking for a few years. And then I switched into investment management and was working for a large Canadian pension fund in their public equities department for over 12 years. Um, earlier last year, there was a rework. And as a result of that, I decided um, to leave and switch things up. So as I was uh, trying to figure out what's going to be next, I was talking to a friend of mine who had uh, recently completed the Terra course. So he was part of a prior uh, cohort. Um, the reason he took the course was uh, that he was a tech entrepreneur. He had recently sold his business and he was looking to start a new, um, new venture within the climate space. And um, he thought that, um, you know, so he took the course to get a good foundational knowledge within climate and also to help develop um, his network within the space. So as for me, um, I had loosely been thinking about the climate space as an opportunity, given, um, you know, the very strong growth um, and, and, you know, it's a very quickly um, developing area. Um, and I already had some exposure through my work at the pension fund, uh, which has a, you know, a pretty had a pretty progressive approach to sustainable investing. Um, and I also had some exposure through my wife, uh, who works in communication with a focus on serving organizations um, that put people and, and the planet first. So, um, so yeah, so I, I, you know, on, on, I decided to apply for the course. And I'm really happy I did. Uh, and, and so a few things that I really like about the course. Uh, so first, I think the course content is very nicely curated. Um, and and I've, I've really been enjoying the learning aspect of it. Um, there are also some great guest speakers that are, are brought in uh, almost every week. Um, so the, you know, there's some very high quality um, uh, contributors um, uh, to the course content. Um, it's, it's for the most part, it's super flexible to fit your schedule. Um, you know, there's a minimum requirement of hours, but you can certainly go above that if you have the time. Um, everything, I think it was mentioned already, everything is recorded. So if you miss something, you can, you can watch it later. Um, you meet a ton of super interesting people uh, from all over the world, different backgrounds, experiences, which has been one of the um, you know, highlights of the course, I would say. Um, the instructors that I've had um, have been very good and passionate. Um, uh, Greg is a great course director. I'm not just saying that because he's here um, uh, and a great facilitator. So that, that's been great. Um, uh, people don't like to talk about money. I'm just going to say it. I think the course is a great bang for your buck. Um, uh, and, and, you know, particularly if you keep in mind that you uh, continue to maintain access to the course content um, after you graduate um and um you know maintain access to the network uh which continues to grow and, and i think is super valuable so everybody within the terror our community uh be it you know terror employees or or alumni or active students are very approachable and keen to help there's ton of there's tons of info shared regularly on slack about you know climate jobs uh climate news uh, initiative started by Terra alumni. So it's a very active community um, and supported by the Terra team uh, and particularly Kirti and, and her team, um, you know, trying to make new connections and be helpful to the students and alumni. Um, and then maybe the last thing I would say is, is uh, so while I came to Terra with the goal of switching uh, to a job within the climate space, um, it has given me a much greater understanding and appreciation for the issue of, of climate change and my role within it um, and lots of ideas of, of how it can help. Um, so uh, depending on where you are on your climate journey and it's probably different for different people, uh, it may also change the way um, you see the world and at least that's, uh, that's what it's done for me and I'm very thankful for that. So with that, I'll pass it over to Ali if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, uh, hey everyone, Ali Martinez. I'm also a member of the Xeris cohort that started late October, is about to graduate in early February. A little bit about my background. So I'm from Chicago. I joined Terra.do because I was looking for a transition into the climate space, but I also was looking to just learn more about all the current state of climate and climate tech that's out there. I actually got a degree in environmental engineering uh, graduated from college around seven years ago, but immediately transitioned into the world of consulting. So while I tried to stay on some sustainability projects, it's a really flexible industry. So I didn't always happen to do that. 
Um, so I used Terra as a kind of a way to kind of reconnect with what I had been learning in school, seeing where the current state of things were, and then also figuring out how I could transition into a product management role. Um, as far as the course content my, itself, having had a background in like deep environmental engineering classes, et cetera, the, the course content is extremely accessible and really fascinating. The way that they Di like are able to digest and summarize the material is really awesome. And then the amount of links and follow-ups they present to you for you to consume at your own time, at your own pace, well, after the course ends too, is incredible. Um, I find myself opening up like 20 tabs anytime I go through a course just to like <laughs> save some for later if I can't get to it because everything's super interesting. And it's it's super, super digestible too. Um, I came into the course thinking, yeah, energy is cool. That's where I want to spend all my time. And now after working through some of the different labs and the lectures and the classes, I've realized that like the food and ag space is super promising and like is where I want to focus more of my efforts on. So it really opens your eyes to different areas of climate tech. Um, and then as my fellow cohort members have mentioned, the lectures are super awesome too. Um, the, one of the first lectures that we received really opened my eyes to the current state of things. And while it's not all like butterflies and smiley faces, um, there is promise out there. And then since then, every lecture has kind of equipped me to go and better have those climate conversations with friends, family, coworkers, loved ones, um, which came in handy around the holidays um, as that came up a lot. Uh, and then the lab, the individual labs that happened on Tuesday, for me at least, um, that's given me a closer network of 20 or so people that, you know, you interact with on a weekly basis. So in addition to the larger community through the Slack threads and channels, you have a closer network too, that you have a little bit more of one-on-one -on -one connection with. Um, yeah, I think that summarizes things. Awesome. Thanks. I want to call out the keynote speaker for this upcoming cohort is Dr. Catherine Hayhoe, who's a world-renowned climate scientist and climate communicator. Uh, and so that will be on February 8th. And uh, yeah, we try to bring in uh, excellent speakers wherever we possibly can. Um, something I didn't call out is the amount of time you need to put into this. And thanks, Moritz and others for mentioning this. Um, it's six to 10 hours is the average. Uh, more than half of the fellows spend about six to 10 hours a week on the course. But as mentioned, if you click every link in every article or in every class, you could spend, I mean, you could put in 40 hours a week if you wanted to. We often describe the class as an all-you-can-eat buffet. And like an all-you-can-eat buffet, you probably don't want to eat everything. You might want to sample various things. And uh, you can always come back for a second course later on after the course is over. And yeah, RT. Um, I just wanted to say that along with the course content being great, it also keeps on getting updated. Like COP27 was held recently, and uh, now a lot of uh, new links were added uh, or uh, changed. And plus, I really like the fact that it's uh, one would think climate change, you're talking more about you know science and this and that, but there's a lot of emphasis on equity and justice, which I personally really like. So just wanted to mention that as well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, RT. Does anyone have any questions at the moment? Um, can we answer anything for any of you folks um, about what this is like or how it goes? Uh, yeah, this upcoming I, cohort, we expect I, to be around three, uh, sorry, 200 fellows. Yeah, I think there was a question. Was that Will? Yeah, thanks. Just to jump in, that was exactly my question as to some of the online materials reference a cohort size of 25, but I just heard you refer to like the breakout lab as 25. How, how does the larger and the smaller groups interact exactly? Yeah, great question. So we have a cohort, which is everyone starting together, and that will be, uh, we're going to be around, around 200 people. In fact, we're going to cap it so it won't go beyond that. And we need to cap, set a cap so that we can hire and make sure all the instructors are ready and in place. And the instructors lead the lab groups, which meet on Tuesdays. And so they'll meet uh, for this upcoming cohort. There will be 11 lab sessions in the 12 week course. The first week we won't have lab because we'll have keynote talks and introduction, introductory sessions and things like that. And so the, the small groups, the 25 or so people in a lab group meet weekly, get to know each other. 
but you do intermingle with others in the cohort at the keynote talks, the live events, the deep dives and other things. So you've got your small group, you get to know a little bit better. We often call that your climate squad, your group of uh, people to get to know and to really work with closely. You work on assignments with them, you share, you discuss in labs, and then there is the larger cohort. I do encourage people to reach out across the cohort and meet people beyond their lab group because they're such amazing people in this uh, in the program. And if you go to a guest talk or or a fireside chat, I didn't mention fireside chats. We also do fireside chats on Mondays or Fridays. We also have community events going on. There's a lot happening. But if you go to one of those events and you see a fellow who says something really interesting and they're not in your lab group, I highly recommend reach out to them and say, wow, I loved your comment. Would you like to meet one-on-one? -on -one? And you expand your network that way. Does that sort of fill in? So we've got cohort, large group, 200 or so lab groups. We'll play, we will have eight lab groups for this upcoming uh, cohort, and those will be around 25 each. Um, I, I just want to make a quick comment before we jump to Suzanne, perhaps. Um, I, I think uh, local uh, groups or local communities are also quite strong within Terra. Bay Area, for example, within the U.S., for example, is very strong community. Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore are very strong communities in India, and so on and so forth. We're trying to get communities established in Canada, within the EU as well. So they might start small, but because more and more folks tend to join, those communities are getting bigger. We try and organize, um, and typically we have like advocacy programs where we have people from within the community who kind of organize uh, meetups in, in real life. And that's like a great way, right? You want to cut the ice, you want to make sure that you're able to connect with people in real life as well, not just on a Zoom screen. So that's a great enabler as well. So this kind of something to put on your radar. Sorry, um, Suzanne? Thank you. I uh, was wondering if, if there isn't currently any sort of certification associated with completing the course, uh, are you all working toward a certification at all? Is that in the, in the goals? That's a, that's a great question. We're not working towards an academic certification of any sort at the moment. We do give you a cert certificate of completion, um, which some people you know, don't find necessarily useful, but many people find actually their employers or potential employers find value in that. So it's not an academic credential of any sort, but uh, more and more companies out there are recognizing Terra.do. And in fact, there are some companies like Afresh and others who seem to seek out Terra.do graduates uh, for jobs. And so having that certificate of completion can be helpful, but it is not an academic credential. And we're not working towards that at the moment. We have discussed some things, but that's not something we're planning to do. Um, Matt. Hi. Um, uh, when you started this meeting, you talked a lot about how uh, Tara is specifically focused on trying to get more people jobs in uh, climate change. I know that's a huge focus of Tara. You've got the, the new job board that just came out. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about what specifically that the Learning for Action program does to help people uh, get climate-related jobs. Yeah, it's a great question. And I'll, I'll clarify one thing. Our mission is to get 100 million people working on climate, but our definition of working does not necessarily mean a job. It means actively participating. So I just want to clarify that part. We do get an awful lot of people who come here looking for a job and looking for a, a job transition. So um, some of the things that we do, as Kirti mentioned, we have the mentors who help guide you through the program. There's the mentorship program, and I'll turn to Kirti a little bit more on that maybe. Um, and the, the mentors, you can reach out to mentors, you can ask for, uh, you can find someone working in an industry or even at a company that you're interested in. And some of them are open to sharing advice about transitioning to that sector or that company. We have assignments, uh, at least two of the individual assignments are geared to help you start to focus on finding a job or finding what you want to work on. We do sessions uh, in labs. We talk about ikigai, which is uh, a Japanese concept that has been pretty westernized. And so it's not truly the Japanese uh, version anymore, where you look at, uh, it's basically Venn diagrams. You look at work that needs to be done, skills that you have, what you enjoy, and some other parameters, and try to figure out how can, what, how can my skills and interests fit into making a difference on climate. We also have a careers workshop that we will have in, uh, I think, week 10, where a career expert, a career coach who's also been a Terra.do uh, instructor 
comes and leads that session. And then something new that we're doing that we are just now doing for the first time is we are offering a careers co uh, class after the end of the Do Learning for Action program, uh, immediately go into this careers course, which is a four week program, which really guides you through the process of how do you look for a job? How do you network? How do you write a resume? How do you identify your skills, interests, and, and some other things? Um, Kirti, do you want to jump in at all on the? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 I'm glad you called that out, Craig. Uh, I think this is very key. It's, it's our pilot to make trying to uh, figure out how that's going to go for the current cohort who's going to go through that as well. And I think it's, it's very much a scenario where we want to enable people to figure out what their path might be like, especially if you're looking for jobs. Everyone will have different goals, but if you're looking for a job, this is what you might need to do to get do it. It's complementary at the moment. I don't know if things will change in the future, but at the moment, it's very much complementary to anybody who's a Jared Otto fellow. Um, I got asked about mentorship as well in the chat, and Greg, there's a couple of questions in the chat if you just want to have a look at that as well. But with mentorship, um, the way we, again, we're trialing at one pilot, we're doing a pilot for the current YAKS cohort, which is on right now, where we have connected them with an alumni. So that's one kind of informal aspect where you get a climate buddy, somebody who's perhaps transitioned into a job or is figuring out their transition is a bit ahead in the journey as compared to somebody who joins the current cohort. And the notion there is that they meet about thrice in the whole 12 weeks. They get guidance from the alumni or figure out how best they can uh, get support, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the informal bit. We also have a formal mentorship program. And the way that's structured is that we've got about 160 climate experts uh, across different sectors, um, from product managers to software engineers to folks working in comms and PR and marketing. And the idea there is that they can tell you a bit about their own life experiences. They can tell you about how their journeys have been, uh, give you advice about jobs, give you advice about uh, you know, what else is possible for you in your journey. And we always try and say structure your conversations and it typically kind of helps you along. And we typically open this at the sixth or seventh week point. So by that time in the course, you would have learned a fair bit about what's happening in the space um, as well and are kind of able to ask the right kind of questions to them to benefit from that conversation as much as possible. But that's kind of where the mentorship program is. So we try and enable like an informal mentorship thing. It's still structured. But, um, you know, we try and enable that with, with alumni, and then we have the formal mentorship program with climate experts who are part of the Teradoto ecosystem as well. So that's broadly the mentorship and, and uh, careers bit as well. I hope that answers your question, Alan. And um, I think, Matt, you talked about that as well. So let's go to Julie, then we'll uh, do a few questions from the chat and come to Tamara, if that's okay. Sure. Uh, so many questions were good. I'm trying to see which of mine are still valid. Uh, here's a simple one. Climate tech. Uh, I went to, uh, I participated in a career fair, I think, last week. Yeah, that's what you called it. Um, all climate tech companies and it's coming up a lot today. Is, the, is this course supposed to attract those who are, you know, zeroed in on climate tech, especially? And is that, That's a great question. Is that yeah. reflected in the curriculum as well? That's a great question. And the answer is actually no. We do tend to attract climate tech folks, but uh, we certainly have people from all aspects of life and the course is intended for everyone with an interest in climate and learning about climate. Um, we do, uh, yeah, there's, I think we have potentially a little more interest in from climate tech folks right now, the layoffs in the tech industry has led a number of folks to say, hey, this might be an opportunity to switch my career to working on climate. I have a tech background, but the course is not, although we accommodate those folks and, and you know want to help them, it's not intended just for them. So we also have an upcoming job fair that is for uh, NGOs and nonprofits. Um, oh, right. mm -hmm. We do some other things on working or working with governments. Uh, so some of that is being as an activist, not even as a job necessarily. Um, some policy type things. So we try to go into a number of different issues where we can. So if you are a climate tech person, and I know we have a couple of questions about that, and I'll get to those in a second here. Um, we certainly try to help you with that, but it is not specifically for climate tech people. Uh, and just want to qualify that. I think going up on, riffing up on Greg's answer, I think if you actually look up the list of job fairs that are up, those are changing in nature as we kind of go through the next couple of months as well. It's been heavily climate tech, but we also realized that people get put off by the idea that it's only meant for a specific type of persona. And it's not. The idea is that it is it is for people 
people are trying to approach climate in different ways. And we need all hands on deck, very frankly. So I, the way our job fairs also geared and the way that it's going to change is also about enabling that as much as possible. And I think just going to quickly answer Maggie's question there as well. I think um, we typically do get mid-career professionals looking to make a transition to space. Having said that, we've had plenty of folks who are students who are either doing a degree or are trying to figure out what that transition might look like and then do our course as well to kind of supplement the education that they're getting or figuring out where they're at. So um, it's not, it's not, it is, the idea is that we are trying to embrace all sorts of people, which is what makes the cohort so exciting and interesting at the same time, because you get to meet people from so many different walks of life as well. So just, I hope Maggie that answers your question as well. Maybe if I, if I can maybe lend a perspective from somebody who's going through the program right now, I, I think I what I would say is, is that um, the Terra team does a great job of, of um, I think a lot of people join the program because they're looking for a job or, or for a career transition. Um, and, and the Terra team does a great job of, um, you know, creating mentorship programs and, and uh, you know, creating more sort of formalized ways and really trying to see how they, they can be helpful uh, to folks going through the program such that they get, you know, kind of out of it what, what, what they want. Um, at the same time, I would say it's, it's, you know, like anything in life, it, it's what you put in is what you get out, right? So, um, you know, the more active you are in reaching out um, and, and you yourself, you know, seizing the opportunities that are presented to you but also you know just going into into slack what i would say is is everybody that i've encountered is is super generous with their time uh, everybody's gone through the program they know what it means and and is is it wants to help and and so if you reach out um you know you will get an answer you will get a conversation and and then it depends a little bit on you kind of where you take that so i think the community aspect of it is is really helpful and and you know all of the tools are there it's a little bit how how you use it i mean the other thing i would say is you know the question you know early in your career versus later in your career i, I would argue that early in your career making the decision is probably a little bit easier even um because sometimes you feel that you know either the 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 job fairs or or general uh, job postings the you know the number of jobs early in your career for people that is, either want to establish a career in climate change or want to switch to it earlier on is probably easier than later in your career but but I think that's normal right um, that if you want to switch later in your career but but I think the same thing applies though I think what it what the what the community gives you is is the connection and the network to you know um, you know, sort of seize that and 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 make it your own and and um, you know get out of it what 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 you would like. If I could just add to what Moritz said uh, on the Slack channel on the community, you keep on hearing about people who uh, did the LFA course like a year back or so, and now they have finally transitioned to working in climate full time. So they continued on with the job, but with the learnings that they took and the lenses that the course provided, they kept on looking and now they found their sweet spot. So the course doesn't hurry you, you do things at your own pace. It's the same with, uh, you know, finding a job, you do it at your own pace. Everybody is in different, you know, phases of life or career. So it's, it's um, very, um, you know, easy that way. Yeah, thanks both. And to add a little bit to this, one of the big takeaways from our course is that there is no silver bullet single answer to climate change, to solve climate change. And because of that, that means there's a role for everyone, whatever your skills or background, and it takes all of us. And so it's not all just climate tech. It's not all just any one particular industry or one particular solution. We try to highlight that. I saw some head nodding from the current students or fellows that we definitely focus on that a great deal. And um, we we have a number of people who are career switchers. And we even talk a little bit about that in some of our career transition uh, programming and courses or lectures, where we have people doing what we call a single switch, where you're staying within an industry and you're changing your job function, or people who wanna change their job function and change their industry, a double switcher. And we talk about that and some of the challenges that go with each of those, but we try to get into some of that stuff. Um, Niccolo had a question, having some yeah. internet stuff. And I wanna ask this of the, of the fellows who are here. Um, you just graduated with a physics PhD, looking to transition into climate tech and uh, more specifically, would love to move into deep tech hardware startups. Do you think Tara would be a good fit for such a transition? Anyone have anything to add there or to respond? I 
think uh, maybe Nicolo can. I, I don't quite understand, uh, to be perfectly honest, what he means by deep tech hardware startups, or I, I assume it's with a focus on climate change. Um, so I, I think you, you get a general overview of, of climate um, change, like you know what's what's the what's the science behind it, and then it goes into all of the social um, um, and political and economic and, and financial aspects of it. So um, there, there's, I would say there's there's you know it depends on how focused you want to be on on hardware versus you know the whole broader topic of, of climate change yeah we don't get into uh any specific uh tech skills but it definitely would be helpful to understand the landscape of what is useful what is needed and where you could find uh, a way to make a difference working on tech and uh, a physics phd could find um I think could find great value. You probably wouldn't learn as much science from us. We don't go deep. We don't go to PhD level science uh, in the course. We want it to be accessible and understandable. And frankly, I, I am not a scientist working on climate um, and I need to understand enough so that I understand what's being talked about by the scientists, but I don't need to know how to create uh, climate models and things like that. I need to just sort of have an understanding of what happens and I need to understand more of the social sciences and policy and areas that I've been involved in. Uh, so I think there could, it could be quite useful, um, but you won't get specific, um, you know, skills uh, and you won't get PhD level learning. That said, I think it could be very, very helpful to explore the entire landscape of climate solutions and what could be useful. I'm going to jump to Tamara and then we'll come back to if there are other questions in the chat. Thank you. Um, I keep getting more questions. <laughs> I've got two. Um, uh, the first is um, sort of how do you, how you, what's the breadth of climate, I guess. Uh, and I say that because a lot of climate tech um, includes um, looking at land use and regenerative agric agriculture or even oceans. So sort of how are you thinking about, are you thinking about this in terms of planetary boundaries or is it just purely addressing climate? Um, and then my, my second question is um, about the climate change for VC course, which you're promoting, um, but it doesn't seem to have been started yet. And that's the area that I am working in. So I'm actually super interested in that course, although I know somebody doing this one right now and it does sound brilliant, um, but I'm just also keen to hear if and when that is starting and if I should wait for that and what the difference would be, would be super interesting to hear. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the questions. Did, would anyone like to address the first part of that? more it's RT or Ali, I think, otherwise um, yeah. I can I can take a stab at it at least um, from our recent assignment for I think the course focuses more so on planetary boundaries of climate climate change etc uh, for example one of our assignments was a we just finished it yesterday but it was a group assignment where we all paired up into smaller groups had to research a specific area those areas range from electricity to industry to oceans and coasts to food and agriculture to land use to then carbon removal. So super broad. And then each each group picked an area within there, presented back research and findings on it. So you can kind of get like a really wide breadth. And in my opinion, it unlocks a lot of more openings in climate than people typically think of when you say climate tech. Yeah. Thanks, Sally. Oh, looks like I, you're I, mute. I, um can you hear me oh yeah we can hear you. it just looked like uh tamara was talking but oh, i see um no i was just nodding sorry <laughs> um, and, and saying to myself good that's good to hear yeah we tend to take a systems approach and multi-solving yeah. lens when we look at climate which means um, we're not just looking at climate change we have multiple overlapping crises at once um, we explore even alternative economic models. We talk about donut economics. We talk about circular economies. We explore all sorts of various things. Um, really just trying to expand the way we think about these problems and to realize that if we can solve more than one problem at once, that might be a better way to go. Um, so we don't want to create land use problems by addressing climate change. We actually want to solve land use problems while we address climate change. Great. Hopefully that's and, and on my second question, on yeah, the um, 
Yeah. I've just popped it into the chat. I think for the VC course, perhaps best to write to our colleague Shatakshi. I think she'll be able to give you very direct answers to this as well. Uh, I will not, I, I definitely don't have insights. I don't know if Greg does, but typically the VC course is, is managed by a different set of people. So it's just best if you write into her and she can give you direct answers about when starting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And anything, anything you have on on courses and admissions, Shatakshi is a person to write into. Just FYI for everybody also on the call. Then you have a very uh, course specific question you've like gotten or you didn't ask us or whatever, just write to Shitakshi. She'll be able to help you out for sure. And same for Nicole as well. I think you have a VC course question. So maybe if you just write to Shitakshi, that will be useful. Um, and I think quick that, answer on the VC yeah, course sorry. as well is um, the VC course is on hold at the moment. We don't have a start date for our next version of it. Um, we are doing a little bit of revamping of that course. And I don't think anyone can say at the moment when it will run again, but it has been a popular course and something we'd like to do. We, as you may have heard from the fellows, we are constantly updating our programs, updating our courses, and that's going through an update at the moment. Um, with the Learning for Action course, we update on the fly. Like we're updating class material while cohorts are running. We have not uh, done that with the VC course. And as, as Kirti mentioned, there are other people in charge of that. We are specifically the Learning for Action team. So I don't believe there is a date set and I don't know when it will run, but we do plan to run it again at some point because it has been useful and popular. Um, Julie, did you have another question? Okay, thanks. I'm not employed right now and I'm actively looking. So it's a little odd to sort of superimpose, you know, a course that may help me find a job with actually potentially starting a new job in the middle. My guess is I wouldn't uh, regret taking the course anyway because uh, it gives that uh, I'm an intellectual, you know, omnivore. So um, uh, I think the buffet sounds great. Um, that said, devil's advocate, if someone uh, is not sure what part of climate to be in, and I guess that includes me, you could have just a few great conversations with people you can dig up and decide, okay, I'm going to get a certificate or master's in X. Um, you know, the the impact or the so what or why am i taking you know this panoply at which point i might decide at the end you know what direction to go uh, versus you know going for a credential that may stand you in better stead i don't know if that makes sense but it's it's a question <laughs> somewhere in there's a question <laughs> okay great well um and i'd open it if any uh, fellow fellows want to answer uh please let me know or jump in here but i think one of the big strengths of this program is it helps you figure out what area of climate you might want to go deeper in or where you might want to work. And one of the questions that we often ask the fellows themselves is, uh, we get asked a lot, should I go get a master's degree or a PhD or something in this? And the real question is maybe, you know, that's really up to you. Have you figured out that that is exactly what you want to study? And is it truly necessary to get you where you want to go? And might it slow down your, your progress towards getting a job working in these issues? Or might you be better off showing that you have some knowledge in this, taking your current interests and skills and applying them to finding a new job? So that's not a very specific answer and I apologize for that, but it really depends on you. Um, I have found, I, I talked with a, a woman recently, she was a fellow in, I believe she was in our salamanders cohort. So it started about a year ago. And uh, she had been a C-level executive working in tech and cloud computing. And we got done with the course and she said, okay, I finally now, 12 weeks later, feel like I'm ready to figure out what I wanna work on. But I didn't know all this time what area to specialize in and where to focus. And so the course helped her. Others know pretty quickly what they wanna focus on and they start paying attention to that. They do like assignment four that was just mentioned. They say, it's. I could focus on sustainable agriculture or regenerative ag. So they do that as their project. They use that to help them uh, get into a career in that. So there are all sorts of ways to approach this. It could go different ways. I think most people find that this can be a quite useful program to help you figure out what to work on. I, I also just want to emphasize time. Time is not on our side, very frankly. And if you want to spend a year or two years versus 12 weeks, um, and get enough knowledge to do the job that you want to do. Because the job requires you to have skills. They don't want you to be a climate expert. They don't want that. They want you to have the skills and just about enough can kind of like help you kind of figure out what it takes to kind of do the job. So they're not interested in you being a scientist, very frankly. But that's if that's what you're interested, it's obviously a different story. 
But I think it's also very much about time. So, I mean, people choose different ways to kind of figure out what their journey might look like, but um, just kind of calling this out as well. Time is not on our side, very frankly. So just saying that. Um, I can just that that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How, how do you go ahead? No, I was just saying that uh, I found the assignments very helpful in, you know, finding focus or uh, I may think that I'm good at one thing, but in doing a certain assignment, I may find, oh, okay, actually my, uh, you know, real interest and talent lies here. And I, I may just uh, shift, make that shift. So the assignments have been very helpful personally uh, in that. So I I would strongly recommend that you do take the course because uh, it, it helps you find that focus. It will push you in that direction. And the community, again, is so warm and supportive. Uh, you will find uh, your people, uh, you know, even and this learning for action, it's it's yes, a uh, job is a focus, but also um, you will find, you know, people who are vegans or, uh, you know, that. So you talk about design, sustainability in design, or uh, you know, vegan cooking and all that. And I, I think that's also important um, to just keep you, because otherwise the problem is so enormous that uh, you can really get weighed down by that. And all this helps in uh, kind of, you, you feel that there are uh, there is a community of people working towards uh, solving the problem and it uh, really helps mentally, I feel. Thanks. Yeah, I just meant to reiterate. I mean, I'm I'm not currently working either, and, and I took the course because it felt to me it was an it was an easier way than committing to something that you know is full time at a much higher cost potentially. Yes, it may give me some kind of certificate or degree, but but this is a great uh, introduction, and then you can take it wherever you want. Where you can go deeper, or you can say you know you can find find an opportunity or job along the way. And even if you do, it, it's it's part time, right? So you can you can finish the course um, while, you know, while starting starting a full time job. So it, it does it does have a lot of flexibility. We've got a, a question about yeah, course but, launch. That's right. Yeah, that's why I was just going to point that out in case you missed it. Yeah. Uh, okay, Thank thanks. Yeah. So we are on a six week course start schedule. So um, every six weeks, starting uh we haven't been exactly on a six week schedule but we're moving to that with this next cohort so it starts six weeks after the previous one Great and then we'll go every six weeks from then so our upcoming uh course starts we have february 6th march 20th may 1st and june 12th those are our next uh cohort starts so if this particular one doesn't fit for you it will be available soon we may change the schedule after june we may not we're trying to see if this works and accommodates what we're hoping to do at one point we talked about actually moving to every four weeks um, but right now the plan is every six weeks um I, I got a private question asking about how this compares with the climate base fellowship and um i have to first admit that i don't know that much about what climate base is doing i do know their program is quite new this has now gone through um 13 or so iterations of the course. It was created by Kamal Kapadia, a PhD in, um, in climate change. Um, and we work with climate scientists and experts in every area for each of our classes. Um, I don't know if Climate Base does the same weekly lab sessions with expert instructors and weekly expert guest talks. I honestly can't comment on that. Uh, I do know that our... Um, favorability ratings, the average person would recommend this course to a friend and uh, people tend to love our program. I know I did. I started as a fellow. I liked it so much. I wanted to work here. So uh, sorry, that's kind of the best I can offer on climate base. I don't know that much about it. Right. I can, I can add a little bit more to that too, because somebody okay. in my small group actually did the climate based fellowship and then okay. came to Tara to do the learning for action course. So there is at least synergies between both where it's worthwhile um, and there's some overlap. Now, I, I haven't done the climate-based fellowship myself, so I don't know what the, what the differences are per se, but they're definitely not exclusive. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. I, I also uh, believe we run at a more frequent cycle than they do, um, I guess I've heard that from somebody else as well. So if you're like, uh, 
you know, if you're keen to gonna start now, there's opportunity right now with, with our learning production course versus climate based. Very frankly, we are better than them. I have to say that because <laughs> we've been working friggin' hard on our course, our work, our community, the work that we've been putting in is definitely it's been it's three years of work and you're seeing it in action very frankly. So yeah. Sorry, just tooting our own horn. I also toot our own horn, but I, I want to throw out that we're excited to see others offering programs. We want our goal is to get people working on climate. And so, you know, if, if our program doesn't seem to work for you, please go explore other options. We want you to find a way to make a difference on this huge global problem. Um, we think that our program meets the needs for many, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, let's see. Are there other questions here? Um, there was a question about the, if we could see the syllabus and, uh, and Kirti answered in the chat, I believe I haven't clicked that link to look at that, to see how updated that is. Is it, does it list guest speakers and, and so on? I, I don't, I don't think it lists guest speakers, but it's in the syllabus. The last one had last look at it, it did have the syllabus, but guest speakers, I'm just wondering what's a, a good option. Maybe, Suzanne, we can email you. I'm sure we have your email ID. Maybe we can send you like a sampling of our guest speakers as well. Um, I'm just going to pop both my email ID and Greg's email ID into the chat. Please don't mind, Greg. I offered you up. Uh, but yeah, if you have no, any please. questions for us, because we are in the last three minutes, I just want to make sure that if you have any questions for us, I think you've forgotten something, just feel free to kind of email us. We're more than happy to like answer. And for all admissions, scholarship related questions, Mr. Takshi is your best bet. Just reiterating that. I'll put her email ID in again in case you missed it. So you know who you're addressing. And unless there are other questions, if there are, please, now's the time. We're running out of time, but I'll just run through the guest speaker list for this upcoming cohort. February 8th, the keynote, Dr. Catherine Hayhoe. Uh, the following week, February 15th, we'll have Climate Science 101 with Dr. Chip Fletcher, University of Hawaii. This is always a highlight of the program. It's kind of a hard hitting. Let's take a look at, he says, we're going to talk about climate science, but actually let's look at planetary boundaries and all the other issues that are going on as well. Then we do an emotional resilience workshop uh, the next week. Then we do a climate justice workshop the following week. Then we have Allison Smart of Probable Futures talking about climate communications and understanding imp climate impacts. Then we do En-ROADS workshops. En-ROADS is a, a climate model or simulator for um, mitigation, uh, different mitigation sectors. Then we'll have our next cohort guest talk. We don't have that. Uh, next cohort's keynote will be a guest talk for this cohort. We don't have that nailed down, but we have some pretty interesting folks that we're talking with about doing that one. Then we will have uh, Dr. Amal. I don't know his last name actually, but he's a, a PhD in, in what's that? Amal, it's Amal Fadki. Amal Fadki, who does a energy, ask me anything, and talk about energy. Energy is a huge part of climate solutions. Following that, we're going to have a greenhouse gas accounting session with uh, Climate Neutral. Following that, we'll do a climate careers workshop with uh, our career coach and, and Tara instructor, then we do an alumni panel. And then in the final week, we have planned uh, a session with 1.5 talking about climate consulting opportunities. Uh, so that's the guest speaker schedule or, or workshop schedule for this upcoming cohort. Hopefully that kind of helped run through a little bit what we do. We do deep dives and uh, we have a number of other events as well. And on that note, we're getting pretty close to the end of our hour. I want to thank you all for coming. If you do have additional questions, you can reach out to Kirti. You can reach out to me. Uh, you can also ask Shatakshi. Shatakshi does handle admissions and scholarships and uh, the other courses as well. So she's a great one to ask, although you can reach out to any of us. And uh, I want to thank our current Xeris Fellows for being here. Thank you so much, Artie and Moritz and Ali. We really appreciate you joining us and sharing your perspective. And I'm sure they'd be happy to answer any questions if anyone had questions as well. So um, thank you all for coming. Hopefully we've answered your questions. And if not, please feel free to reach out and ask. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you and goodbye. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.